youth of this generation. Where are you? Can you stand up? Praise the Lord. Now I'm talking to the young people. I said, Praise the Lord. Now you'll see that we have to bring you back here today. And we need to make some readjustment. And children in the family ought to understand. We've discovered that if we kept on the previous arrangement, that every Sunday I come to you at the time we arrange will be coming, there'll be no question and answer in the church anymore. And that's going to be a great, great loss. And we don't have time today to show you from the Old Testament how question and answer period is part of the worship of the children of Israel. And then with the Lord Jesus Christ, how the disciples ask questions quite a lot of time. And some of the great, great deep things were at in the New Testament came as a result of they asking questions from the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the epistles. You'll find the believers asking questions from the apostles. So we discovered that if we catch that arrangement, there'll be no question and answer here at the headquarters church any Sunday, both here and at, the, and at the DLCC. Then, what we do at the headquarters, all the other churches will do. So that arrangement will wipe out this important area of our worship uh, all over deeper life in the whole of the nation and all of Africa and even beyond. So that's why we are readjusting. Are you all right? Are you happy with the pastor? You are not happy? When children are happy with daddy, what do they do? How, how do I know you are happy now? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I used to think that she could clap more than that, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, the, the youth choir too, it's like, you know, the youth choir saying, this is our chance to be ministering on Sunday to the young people. I understand, accept that. That's wonderful. But what if, uh, you know, you keep on ministering to the youth and that makes the church to lose this important thing we're talking about. So, you know, in a family, children have to say, okay, I give up that for the privilege of daddy, mommy, and the whole family. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. And those of us in the adult section too, when we get to DLCC for our third week end of the program, we're also going to adjust because uh, the way we've been doing it now, question and answer has faded off. And if that continues, it doesn't really affect us in Lagos, it affects the people in the state as well and everywhere because we transmit and they follow the same program. And we're going to make sure that as we want to get something new, we don't uh, jeopardize the progress of the church and the uh, strong conviction of the church. So that's why we're making the adjustment. And uh, so when you get there, you see that we have adjusted a little. Uh, just to understand that we're thinking and planning the best for the whole church. Praise the Lord. Adult, adult church, are you all right? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, young people. God bless you real good. You can sit down. Today, instead of a uh, question and answer, I'm going to look at an important area of First Corinthians. Very important. If you look at First Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5, verse 6, verse 7. It says in verse 5 that in everything ye are enriched by him, and in all utterance, and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gifts waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you look at the church at Corinth, this is a church where Paul the Apostle spent a long time. He spent a longer time in Corinth than any other church. Teaching them, ministering to them, impacting their lives, imparting gifts unto them. And as he wrote to them here, he said, You're witnesses. You have the experience that 
in everything, literally everything, everything spiritual, everything of miracle, everything of exploit, everything you can think about that people are looking for at that time, you come behind in nothing. You are enriched. And then it says, in knowledge, they had knowledge upstairs in the head. And then utterances, utterances in their language, utterances in another language. And then he said, compare yourself with any other church, church at Philippi, at Ephesus, and any other place. Compare yourself, you come behind in no gifts. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, gift of faith, working of miracles, and gifts of healing, and prophecy, and diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. You come behind in no gift at all. But let's look at the church now at Corinth. And look at the effect of running after those gifts, what it did to that church. And we need to study this so that we will understand what is wholesome revival, what is wholesome church administration, what is wholesome church growth, so that we do not get off on a tangent. I'm going to look at chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 11. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Speaking in tongues plus contention. Healing plus contention. Deliverances plus contention. And all these gifts plus contention. And you know, you could have healing if you don't have purity of heart, holiness, unity with Christ and the people of God, heaven will be doubtful. And so he says, there are contentions among you. Look at verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you says, I am of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Severs, and I'm of Christ. He said, that's the division among you. As we look at the tendency and the way our church is going, you know, sometimes you can start something good. And then down the line, we're going to have real great, great problem. Here it says, I'm a Paul. You know Paul? He was the father of the church at Corinth. Other people say, forget about him, old man. I'm a Severs. Forget about Severs. Not one that denied the Lord at that time. I am of Apollos. That man can talk. The church became divided. We need to nip the, uh, you know, the problem at the point is just starting. I'm of the adult church. I'm of the youth church. I'm of the campus church. I'm of the IFL church. I'm of the women church. I'm of the language church. It can creep in little by little. And while we leaders and preachers are running after the gifts of the Spirit and healing and deliverance and everything, the church becomes segmented. And then it becomes like, I am also of this section of the world. I don't listen to anybody. Just forget about Jesus Christ. I listen to my sectional leader. And then we go down the line, other people say, how many times do I see GS in my life? You know, we come to combined service a few times. I am of group pastor. Other people say group pastor. Can I get him when, when, you know, I have a problem? I am of my local pastor. Other people, the satellite church is all I know. And then the church becomes so much divided and we close our eyes to that division and contention. And before we know what, you know, there's a church there, although we're physically together, but we're so divided. I hope, you know, we don't come to that situation. That's the reason why we need to look at what we're doing. And we need to look at all these, you know, recommendations of people. You know, sometimes uh, I think uh, I'm becoming a little bit, I'm listening too much to people too nowadays. You know, because in the past, we we'll just look at the word of God. We'll say, this is the way to go. But you know, where there's a meeting there, give us a campus church. There's another meeting there, give us a youth church. Another meeting is going to rise up, give us a women's church. Other people are going to say, give us an IFL church. 
And then this one is there. Now we are only responsible to Apollos and to Sivas and to Paul and different, different people. Is Christ divided? And yet, all that healing was going on. And, the, you know, all those meetings were going on. And Paul, the apostle said, come back. Let's, let's get this thing together. And we're telling the church today, we're coming back. I said, we're coming back. So you will find, look at, the, look at the Acts of the Apostle. Well, we have the history of the church. All this segmentation, this one is there, that one is there. Some people are complaining, if you don't give us, uh, you know, this kind of church and this kind of church and that kind of music, then we cannot continue with the church. And then we have to listen to the people, whatever they want is what we're going to do. No, if the church belongs to Christ. And whatever Christ wants for his church, that's what we're going to do in Jesus' name. And look at this uh, church that had all these gifts. Look at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading there from verse 2. It says, I fed you with milk and not with meat. It says, for he that too, ye were not able to bear it. It says, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. Speaking in tongues, you are carnal. Interpreting tongues are yet carnal. All those healings are taking places, they are taking place, they are forgotten. The real solid watch of God, Bible study, not important anymore. Who wants Bible study? All I want is healing. All I want is deliverance. All I want is success. I want to claim the promises of God that says he shall be heard and not tell. What if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's why the Lord is telling us, come back. That all these people that were seen, now they were carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division. Envy and strife and division. And you know what is happening? We go to the retreat. And then we we'll say, here is a campus retreat, here is youth retreat, and then uh, the youth uh, people are saying, how about our food? Are we, the adults are eating already. All these comparisons, they now come in. Adults are eating already. Where is ours? And then they get angry. And we lose uh, these young people from following after the Lord. And then the campus people are there. They're saying, they served us bread and tea now. What did they serve in the adult section? All those things come, the things we never thought about. All those things now, they come in. And it's saying over here that carnality will come in, contention will come in, divisions will come in. It says, are ye not carnal and walk as men before we know uh, what is happening? Our retreats and conferences will just become like we go there to fight each other. It will not happen. Yeah. I said it will not happen. Yeah. You know, that is why we need to look at the scriptures very well so that the church will come back to watch the New Testament church actually stood for. Look at Acts and look at this, First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. This church where they were speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, prophesying, people getting healed and the people getting delivered, miracle, miracle everywhere you come behind. You know, gifts, but it is reported commonly among you that there is fornication among you, such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Can you imagine that? The kind of defilement that came in. And they, you know, they, just, they just overlooked their holiness, righteousness. Because what's important now, we are hearing testimonies. Hear that thing. Great thing happened. Blind eyes opening and the lame rising up and walking. And you know that person, we brought him in here. He was totally having mental problem. And when the pastor mentioned the name of Jesus, all those things flew away. Meanwhile, fornication is going on behind the scene. Meanwhile, divorce and remarriage, people are divorcing. There was no more teaching again. And people are not living right anymore. And Paul the Apostle said, Corinthian church. Why well, I spent much of my life and I laid line upon line for you. See what we're hearing. It says in posture, and ye are pumped up, and I've not rather mourned that he that, that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. That was the situation in this uh, church. While they were, you know, in pride, we have Holy Ghost, we have power, we have authority, people are getting healed. A revival time has now come for our church. You, you see people getting this and getting that. 
but I about holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 1. Chapter 6, reading from verse 1, it says, There any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Let's uh, jump down to verse 7. In verse 7, now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you. This speaking, this uh, tongue speaking people, this miracle receiving people, this sick healing people, all these demon chasers, look at them casting out devils, and yet look at what's happening. It says there's utterly a fault among you because ye go to law, they were taking each other to God one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Hey, can you think about that? You, you know, they just forgot about Christian love, about Christian understanding, and about the way we ought to live our lives. You come to chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, they were asking a question, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. It says, let every man have his own, his own what? Tell me out loud. And then that means it's yours completely. It's not a woman you are sharing with somebody else. You're sharing with coordinator. Not a woman you are sharing with group mentor. You're saying, ah, my wife, what's the matter? You spend more time with a group pastor than you spend with me. And in fact, uh, the group pastor knows more about your life, about your plans, more than about me. Who is your husband? Where do you stand? Have you married group pastor? You have married me. Not, you know, and, and then he says, her own husband, his own wife. You know, they were no more giving commitment to the Christian standard on marriage. And yet, speaking in tongues, what's going on? And we don't want that in this church. It will not happen in this church in Jesus' name. Yeah. And you know, that, that's the reason why. If some decisions are taken, you need to understand that, you know, sometimes uh, leaders come together. And when those leaders come together, they say some, you know, sometimes I'm not in those meetings. It's not because I'm not in the country. Sometimes, even when I'm in the country, there are times I choose not to be in a particular place. If I feel that, okay, that's in their hands, let them talk together. And if my presence is not there, they'll be free. So that my presence will not restrict what they want to say. And then reports may come back to me that this is what to do, that's what to, that's what to do. At the spur of the moment, if I felt, okay, that's what they want, they feel that will solve the problem, they feel that will clear up matters, I might say, that's all right. But then, as I go back to the scriptures, and I see that, look at what the scripture says. And now we have said yes to this, and yes to that, and yes to that, without looking at the scriptures. By the grace of God, and that, that's why we come back and we say, hey, that decision you people took, we didn't look at the scriptures very well. Now we're looking at the scripture, and we're going to stand by the scripture in Jesus' name. And I hope, I hope that no group pastor gets offended because I come back and I say, the church is going to follow the Bible. I pray, and I hope that no church secretary will get offended and say, we decided all this and we wanted to do it like this. And now the GS, if he, is, if he didn't trust us, why did he commit things into our hand? Of course I trust you. That's why I said yes originally. But as we come back to the watch of God and I say, uh-uh, this will lead us astray. And this will make the church, it will polarize the church. You know, I want one church there, that or that, and we're all together physically, but we have different styles of leadership. And I say, no, it, we must come back to being a righteous, rapturable church, and everybody, I believe, will say, yes, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Am I speaking uh, what you understand? Yeah. Do you accept everything? Yeah. You see all this before, you see, as we, you know, we have all this one, this one is going, that one is going on, and... Let everyone have his own wife. We don't, marriage committee does not have time to meet because we are planning revival. We are planning, you know, weekends. So we are planning this and that. And 
immorality will come in. A lot of things will come in. That's why I was saying, let's reorganize ourselves. Let's look at the watch of God again and see that this is the direction the church will go. And whether I am there physically or not, I'm giving you the watch. Because, you know, some people don't understand. What is the GS? Uh, the GS is not a local pastor. G, what does that G mean? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Well, S, what is S? Yeah. What? Yeah. You know, the general superintendent is always at the IBTC. Every time you want to see, it's always there. You know, that's a local pastor. Uh, you know, uh, this, uh, at the beginning of this month, I was in Accra, Ghana. And by the grace of God, I'm telling you that, you know, over there, if you go to the internet, you'll see all the reports that people are given. Revival came over there. What if I just stay here? Uh, before that, uh, in February, I was in Kumasi. And the people there, the things that happened, you know, to get the people back to what things ought to be. And then, you know, the other Sunday, about uh, two Sundays ago, one the president of Ghana, and he was talking about deeper life. He said, keep on doing this thing. We know deeper life in our country, Ghana. What if I just stay here? So that's the reason why sometimes I'm not here. Sometimes I'm over there. I'm over there. I'm over there. And whether you're here or not, you say, well, that's GS. That's his work. I said, that's his work. And when I'm here, then I'm here. I say, when I'm here, then I'm here. And then you'll not say, what have you come back for? Because, uh, you know, we're, we're handling everything well. I'm still the general superintendent. And it's not, it's not paper. You know, some people think it's paper. It's not paper that made me GS. It's the, you, the Lord himself. That's why the Apostle Paul said, and the Apostle, so am I. You see, sometimes, there are times we need to remind the church. That this is the calling the Lord has given us. And because he has given us that calling, it's not something we're fighting for. It's not something we're kind of competing for. It's not by vote. This is the calling of the Lord. And we're going to make good use of that calling in Jesus' name. Hey, look at chapter 8. I'm reading chapter 8, verse 1. In chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And now, as touching things offered to idols, we know that all ye all have knowledge. Knowledge is knowledge perfect of but charity edified. You know, for Paul, the apostle, to be talking about things so far to idols in a church where they had spiritual gifts and speaking in tongues and a lot of revival. What happened to them? They forgot the basic, essential things, foundational things. We're not going to forget in Jesus' name. Look at verse 11. It says, and, and you say, and through thy knowledge shall thy weak brother perish for where? Uh, for, uh, for whom Christ died. He said they were behaving in such ways that they didn't mind what happened to other people anymore. All they wanted just to please myself and to go my own way. And he said, see what you are doing. It will make other people perish. It will not happen in our church in Jesus' name. Now in chapter, in chapter 9 verse 1, it says, am I not an apostle? Think about Paul the apostle having to come to this, to even ask them the question. He said, Corinthian church. Was it Peter that come, came here to plant the church? Was it Apollos that came here to plant the church? Was it Sivas that came here to plant the church? Am I not an apostle? You know, sometimes uh, uh, the way some people behave, the way some people, you know, ma manage their own leadership, they forget that God used somebody to get the church started. And God has used somebody to make the church go on. Think about a campus ministry. Who did God use to start campus ministry? It's me. And think about a youth ministry. Who did God use to start the youth ministry? It's me. And all these other things, I felt, whatever it is, God gave me the vision. And God gave me the vision. And then we're doing this. If we not put you in charge, be in charge of this, be in charge of that, be in charge of that, don't forget that you are not the foundation leader of that section. And then to now tear the church apart and say, this is what we want. Who are you? We should get back to our roots and say, God used the mind to start this and to start this and to start that. And it's the vision God has give, given him. That is what we are to continue in. So that you'll give me the chance to be able to say, Paul Agrippa, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. And this vision will continue in Jesus' name. Nobody will hijack the vision and, you know, go with the vision in its own way. That's why he's saying in chapter 9 verse 1, I'm not I an apostle. 
am, am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? And not ye my work in the Lord? Then he says, If I be not an apostle unto them, unto other people, yet doubtless I am, I am to you. And then he says, For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. He says, Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Can you ever imagine that anybody will be questioning the authority and the leadership of Paul the Apostle in the church at Corinth? He said, this is my answer. And then he gave them the answer. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. And look at chapter 11 of, uh, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians. I'm reading from verse 29. Chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, verse 29. It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, tell me, spiritual church, spiritual church, having gifts of the spirit, and they come behind in no gift at all. And they were rich in all things, in all utterance, and in all, and in all knowledge. And it says, for this cause, because they left the essential things, and they just ran after miracles and deliverance and this and that for this cause. Many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. Many of them were even dying prematurely with all those gifts. That's what we want to avoid. That's why we're saying whatever other people have counseled or advised, we're going to look at the Bible. We're going to go the direction we want to go so that this church will remain the church of the living God. Not to, it will not be a church where all the programs and all the things we're doing will be decided by one committee meeting somewhere. Committee meeting somewhere. Who put the committees there? God used me to put the committees there. It is not that the committees will take over and the committee will be higher than the general superintendent. No. The committees, whatever committees they are, they are still under the leadership of the pastor of the church. Now that, you know, they take over and then it's a, the, the pastor now become a puppet and they dictate to him, do this, pastor, rise up now, get down now, don't come now, come at this time. Never. It will not happen. Yeah. And that's the reason why the Lord is saying, church, wake up. We're going to wake up in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 34, wake to righteousness and say not. And I come to tell our church at the headquarters here, and I'm telling the church in every region, every state, I'm telling the region, I'm telling the church in the whole of this nation, Nigeria, I'm telling the church in the continent of Africa, I'm telling the church everywhere, awake to righteousness, and see not, unfortunately for some, have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We're going to rise up. We're going to keep this church holy and righteous and rapturable in Jesus' name. It says in verse 3, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Our manners will not be corrupted. Our methods will not be corrupted. We we'll thank the Lord for the way the Lord has led the church up to this point, and this church will continue following after the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, even though I said, you know, I'm here, I'm there, I'm there, this is still the headquarters church, and, you know, God has made the Lagos the head in deeper life, and will remain the head in Jesus' name. You know, anywhere I go, I might go in there for one time, one, one meeting in a year, one weekend in the year, go to another place, you know, one weekend in the year, but, you know, the rest of the time, where am I? I said, where should I be? And so I'm here, and you are here, we are here together, hearts joined together, hands joined together. This work will see a great growth in Jesus' name. Let's be united. Come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. It says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, how many of us? How many that she all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That's what we're going to do. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That God will keep his church.
There will be no division in the church. No segmentation in the church. Adult church, women church, campus church, youth church, language church, rich people's church, poor people's church. Let's keep the church together. And we're not going to run after healing, deliverance, miracles, and leave holiness behind. Let there be unity in the church of the living God. Play your part. I'm a part of the progressive elements moving the church in the right direction. Direction of holiness, right righteousness, so I will remain a rapturable church.